Hey everyone, welcome to my shop. Um, there's a whole lot more of you guys here than there was last time I made a video and I, thanks. I really appreciate that, it's pretty awesome. But what I wanna make this video for right now is really actually for all of you new people out there because some of you guys are actually looking to build the 2AR motor and my email is just bursting right now with a whole bunch of questions. And to be fair, these questions are answered in my videos, but you have to go pretty far back in the history. So let's just kind of summarize it together in one video. And I'll tell you what I know about how to make more power from this engine. Before we get into the things that are different about all these builds that I'm about to describe, let's talk about the things that are the same and particularly the test conditions, which I've tried to keep as much the same as possible. Uh, all of these were done on TCS Motorsports' dyno, and it's a dyno jet chassis dyno, so all of these numbers will be wheel horsepower, uh, not crank horsepower. Uh, there's going to be roughly a 15 to 20% difference there between that, but we're gonna be talking strictly wheel horsepower. On top of that, we're only gonna be using the standard correction factor, but if you wanna convert that to anything else, the environmental conditions will be shown as much as possible on each of the dynographs so that you can convert it to whatever standard that you want. Also, in all cases, all of these things were done in fourth gear and they were done through an EB60 transmission. So whatever that 15 to 20% number is should be pretty much the same between all the tests. So let's move right along to the first one. So we have here, the highlighted one here is a run with 195 horsepower, 176 foot-pounds of torque. This is a completely bone stock 2AR FE, again, using the, uh, the swap header and using the stock intake manifold. In this case, after the header, there is a catalytic converter as well as a chambered muffler. I do have another dyno run that shows with just more of a, uh, a straight exhaust with a straight through muffler afterwards that shows 205 wheel horsepower, but that was not done on this dyno. So we're gonna keep just to the, the TCS Motorsports dyno. That puts us at 195 wheel horsepower, 176 foot-pounds of torque for something that's been completely untouched internally. Now there's a couple things to note there. When I used it with the Haltech, here you can see, you can see there's a curve that's got a little bit more low end here versus the stock ECU. The reason for that is the VVTI phases on these motors with the stock ECUs don't want to go between zero and five degrees. And that extra curve there is right in that range. So if you use it with a factory ECU, uh, particularly with the tuned one that I sell, you're going to get that 195 and that exact curve right there. If you're using it with an aftermarket ECU, then you can expect a little bit more bottom end. Moving on to our next configuration, here is an overlap of two dynographs. Now, it's important to note the lower one here is not fully tuned. What that is, is I took my new intake and I put it on that otherwise completely bone stock 2AR. Um, I ended up doing just three dyno pulls and I got to the point where it was 100% obvious that there was gonna be no power gained, so I just dropped it. You could probably get a lot closer to matching, but that intake on an otherwise stock engine is just gonna give you nothing. Now for the next configuration, what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep the factory intake manifold, not this one, this is the hybrid manifold, uh, but the factory 2AR intake manifold, and we're gonna keep the, uh, the swap header on there, though we're gonna replace the rest of the exhaust with something that's a lot shorter, a lot straighter. We're not gonna have a catalytic converter on it and the muffler, instead of being chambered, is gonna be straight through. Now, on that one, we are also will have taken the valve cover off, we'll have replaced all of the valve springs and we will have replaced the camshafts. Uh, valve springs and camshafts in the descriptions, it's the ones that I sell in my store and that gets us right here. So that's 241 wheel horsepower and 195 foot-pounds of torque. Now, as nice as that configuration is, and it truly is nice, I've actually raced it in that 240 wheel horsepower configuration, and it's just absolutely glorious. 
Now, as nice as that 240 wheel horsepower is, um, it's obvious in the build that the camshafts are built for a much higher RPM than the intake. So the intake runners are just too long and they're not compatible. So you've got your, your peaks are far apart and you're just gonna end up making less power because of it. So let's take that intake, let's toss it and replace it with the intake that I make. Um, you can see it right here. And we run that again on the dyno and we get this, this wonderful exhaust note right here. Um, you can hear more of it in the video actually linked right there, but that gets us right here. So that gets us to 271 wheel horsepower and again, 191 foot pounds of torque. That's starting to be a hell of a lot of power. And remember, that's with the 10.4 to one compression ratio with the stock two and a half liter displacement that's available, not the upgrade to 2.7. So now 270 horsepower, that's pretty fantastic. Um, I've got more to do on that. Um, in fact, here, let me, let me go get something. So what I have here is keep in mind that 270 was with factory ports. This is a ported head and this ends up having about 30% more airflow at the same valve lift. We don't know exactly how much power that translates to yet because this is, well, sitting in my hands, not on a motor. I need to fix that. And at the same time as I'm going to fix that, I'm also gonna be tuning it with higher compression pistons and the 2.7 liter crank. And we'll see what kind of power that makes. But we're not here to speculate. We're here to talk about the actual numbers that we have gotten. So that brings us to this motor right here. So I keep pointing at this as if it's a 2ARFE. This is not, this is a 2ARFXE. And a lot of you guys already know what this is. This is the base motor that we used in the gears and gasoline build. Now, with this thing on the dyno, these are the numbers that I've got. Um, 231 wheel horsepower and 203 foot pounds of torque. And you can see pretty wide torque band. What that exact configuration is, is we take the 2AR FXE and the cam tower here, which is a replaceable unit, has been replaced with the dual VVTI unit. And the valve cover has been replaced with the dual VVTI unit. We take the exhaust camshaft that's factory for this. We pitch it, we grab a second intake cam from the exact same motor, put it in the exhaust position that works on this motor and it's still running the factory 2AR intake manifold on there. And again, with a straight through exhaust. In fact, it's the exact same exhaust that I ran my other tests on. Now, what we'll notice right there with that curve is we're, again, we're stopping right at pretty much the same point. So that 230 to 240 wheel horsepower, it really seems like that stock intake is limited there. So there's a couple more things we have to test. Um, that FXE build, we do have to put my new intake on it and see what kind of power that's gonna make. And more importantly, for race car use and also for uh, use in other countries, I was looking through all the data again, and if we were to take this cam gear right here, which is the one that's non-VVTI uh, on the factory exhaust, and we were to set it so that it was just 20 degrees later valve actuation than the factory setup at the rest position, then the mid-range losses would only be about two or three horsepower. The biggest cost would actually be idle quality. Um, I don't know exactly how it would idle, but, but here's an example. Um, this right here is the FXE motor idling on uh, with both cams in the rest position, essentially. And you can see super buttery smooth. And this video right here, I pushed back the exhaust opening by 20 degrees and listen to that. So obviously that's going to idle a little bit worse, but, but here's the thing. Then I inspected the intake camshaft, well, intake camshaft, and I noticed that on this particular motor, I never go over 25 degrees. If we remember, these camshaft phasers are 45 degrees, and conveniently, because of the number of teeth on here, this is 36 teeth, so every time we move one tooth, we advance 20 degrees. Keep in mind, uh, degrees of crankshaft, not camshaft. 
So what that means is we can push the rest position for the intake camshaft by one tooth again, uh, 20 degrees, and potentially, well, not potentially, that will reduce 20 degrees of valve overlap, which will potentially fix that idle quality issue. Uh, that has other really interesting implications that I want to test because that puts the intake cam right back into the factory position that it is in the hybrid motor, which means the, uh, the sensor right here that's detecting the cam position will be detecting the cam at the correct position. So there's a small chance, there's a small chance that this particular build, we can drop a lot of cost out of it and make it make 250, 260 wheel horsepower. That's speculation until I do it, but that is one of the next configurations I'm going to try because I, I think there's a lot of potential there. Essentially, you're just using a second intake cam from the FXE, putting in the exhaust position and not mucking with any of the cam tower or valve cover stuff, and potentially not even with an aftermarket ECU. So stay tuned for that one. And from there, I just wanna say thank you to all the new subscribers that have joined. Uh, it's pretty awesome. There's been over a thousand new subscribers since last time I made a video, uh, which is, it just blows my mind. So thank you and uh, stay tuned. Uh, we're gonna keep mucking with this motor. Um, I've also got some things going on with the 2GR. There are going to be some tests on that. Also, I've got an intake for the 2GR. That's gonna be a pretty neat test. So, so there's gonna be, gonna be some, some nice things coming along. Stay tuned. Have a good one. The one that was actually on that motor. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, it's all over my leg. So the thing to note there, by the way, is sometimes the motors that end up in junkyards have sat upside down for a while and the intake manifold can fill up with oil. So you should always clean them up before you start your car.